Hey guys, today I want to show you how to use a MIDI input to change settings and to process your photo in Capture One and in Darktable. All right, let's get into it. For this video, I'm going to be using a loop deck, the original loop deck, not one of the more recent ones. But really all this loop deck is, is a glorified MIDI input that has knobs instead of keys and labels that are particular to Lightroom. Loop deck does have beta support for Capture One, but not for Darktable. And even then, I found that the Capture One beta support was pretty bad. Only about four of these things on here actually worked. So even though I'm going to be using the loop deck as my example MIDI input, Theoretically, this should work for any MIDI input device. If you use any other MIDI input device, leave a comment below saying which one so that others can know whether or not they work with this solution. The most important first step is to get some software that will convert MIDI signal into keystrokes. I have had success using a product from Bohm, B-O-M-E. They have this Bohm MIDI Translator Pro, which you can use as a trial the trial allows you to use it for 20 minutes and then it will stop working. I also have used the MIDI Translator Classic. Unfortunately, this is Windows only, but I actually really like this because it doesn't work only for 20 minutes on the trial. You can use it indefinitely on the trial. So if you're on Windows, I recommend using this. It's going to be largely the same as the MIDI Translator Pro. I think if you watch this video, you'll understand how to use MIDI Translator Classic as well. But I'm on Mac right now, so we are going to use MIDI Translator Pro. I'm just going to use the trial for now. So like I said, what this app does is it takes MIDI signal and it can convert it to keystrokes. For the trial, like I mentioned, it's 20 minutes long, and every time you load it up, you have to wait 10 seconds or so. Once you're in, you just click OK. So what we want to do is add a translator for every function that we want our MIDI input to have. For example, let's say we want to have contrast increase, and we will also have contrast decrease. You'll see a couple things on here, the incoming trigger, so that's the input from the MIDI device, and then the outgoing action, which we will make a keystroke. Over here, it has a more expanded view of what these are, and it's where you're going to want to configure them. So for me, with my loop deck, I want to capture input just from the loop deck. So if I had any other MIDI device, it wouldn't read it incorrectly. So for both of these, I'm going to change the input to be just loop deck. And whatever MIDI device you're using should show up here. If it doesn't, you should troubleshoot that before going any further. So let's work first on contrast increase. So we've selected loop deck as our input, and then I have to capture the input from my MIDI device. So for me on loop deck, I actually have a knob that's labeled contrast. So I want to capture the input from this knob. What you do here in the MIDI translator is you go to capture MIDI, and then this will capture any signal coming out of your MIDI device. So if I go forward or clockwise with my dial, that's the MIDI signal coming through. If I go counterclockwise, that's the signal coming through. So I will go clockwise and then select one of those. So that is my incoming trigger. So the signal in port or on port loop deck. And what I want to do is change that to a keystroke output. So here in outgoing, we want to change it to keystroke. And then here I can actually just use the keyboard on my computer to map it to any key combo I want. So for me, for contrast increase, let's do command control shift C. So now if you'll notice the outgoing action is that keystroke. 
or that key combo. So for contrast decrease, let's go back here to capture MIDI. I can't remember which one of these is the correct one, so I'm just going to go decrease here, and that's the correct one. And then let's go down here for the keystroke that we want to set. And since we did command control shift C for contrast increase, let's do command control shift V for contrast decrease. And then let us save this. And it saves it as a special file type, this BMTP. So I am going to name mine loop deck. So now I have the save file and I could actually use this on another computer if I wanted to do that. Now that we've set a couple of these triggers, let's go into Capture One and set custom shortcuts in Capture One that correspond with these. If you're only interested in Darktable, skip to the timestamp that I'm showing on screen right now. Okay, so in Capture One, to change the shortcuts, we want to go to Edit and then Edit Keyboard Shortcuts. It will start off with the default shortcuts. I like creating my own that is named. So that way, if I ever need to change back to the defaults, I can easily. So I'm going to create a shortcut named loop deck. And then you can have all of your special shortcut keys under the same name. So there is already something set for contrast plus one and minus one, but I'm going to remap that to what the MIDI controller is outputting. So there's my contrast increase and contrast decrease. And then if I hit close, so now if we go back to our MIDI input device, whatever key or knob or whatever that we mapped to these contrast settings, we'll want to test this out. So for me, it was this contrast knob. And when I increase it, sure enough, our contrast increases. And then when I decrease it, our contrast decreases. So that is working wonderfully for me. The other knobs are not working for me because I haven't set up any of the shortcuts for them. But once I map all of these, I can have every knob doing whatever I want. So now that we've done this in Capture One, let's go into Darktable and show you how to do it there. In Darktable, we'll want to edit our keyboard shortcuts by going to this little gear icon and then over to Shortcuts. You can import and export or you can set back to default. For now, I'm just going to modify the ones that I want. So let's go into image operations, and then I want to change our contrast. So let's go to here, contrast decrease. If you remember, we had that set to command control shift V. So if I type that, it says it's already mapped, but I'm going to replace it for our sake. You may want to find better key combos than the one I chose. For increase, we had command control shift C. That one is also already mapped, but I'm just gonna override it for now. One thing that I just noticed while inputting these is that for some reason, Darktable is not recognizing the command key on my Mac keyboard. So this actually is just control shift V and control shift C. So I'm actually gonna go back into my MIDI translation and change these here. I probably should have chosen a better key combo for these, but for this example, I just chose the first thing that came to my head. So I'm going to do Control Shift C for control, contrast increase, and I'm going to do Control Shift V for contrast decrease. So now back in Darktable, if we first off test out Control Shift C, we see contrast goes up, and Control Shift V contrast goes down. And now we'll go to our MIDI input and we will test that knob. And sure enough, as I move it counterclockwise, our contrast decreases. And as I move it clockwise, our contrast increases. That's really all there is to it. It's pretty simple, just sort of tedious. It took me about an hour to set up all of the knobs and dials on this loop deck. But if you only wanted to do five of these knobs or a handful of these knobs, it would obviously take much less time. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you have great success doing this with your own MIDI devices. If you do, make sure to leave a comment below saying which MIDI device you used and which software you are using it with so that we can all benefit. Okay, thanks. Have a great day. Bye.